I, I suppose you can all hear the mowers out there. It's the best I can do this morning. Lock myself in the studio. I didn't end up here in Hawaii uh, because I wanted to live in paradise or because I had some kind of dreamy thoughts, you know, or anything. In fact, I, I didn't have any plans to live here in Hawaii. This was, this was not part of the program as far as I was concerned. Hey, Greasy. What's up, girl? Mm -hmm. No, this wasn't a, any kind of a dream for me. Uh, it was synchronistic, and I pay attention to synchronicities in my life. I, I had had plans to live in uh, Central Coast, California for retirement. That was what I thought I was going to do. But California real estate boom kind of put an end to that real fast. I got priced out of the market. Had to come up with some kind of an alternate. Friends pointed the direction, and here we are. Now, I spent a long time uh, researching this whole thing. I mean, I, I must have spent at least a year and a half uh, looking at the MLS, uh, you know, the features of the sun, how the rain is, what's the wind, you know, what's the geology, and so on and so forth. Uh, I spent a lot of time researching just about everything about this island, and uh, well, I, I came to the conclusion that it is a really different place <laughs> as far as when it comes to living in America today. Uh, Hawaii is not going to be the same as life in Kansas City for sure. It's really different. And it has taken me, whoop, my cat is moving my tripod here, Gracie, stop that. He's rubbing on the tripod. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We ended up here, and I wasn't really sure about it. Yeah, you know, uh, I, well, I don't know, I think Chicago, where I was born, probably gets 30, 32 inches of rain a year. You know, up where I lived in northern Wisconsin for many years, it's yeah, like 36 to 38 inches of rain a year, you know. So rain under 40 inches a year is something that, that I grew up around, and uh, well, I don't have any problems with it. It's, that's good rain, you know. It was enough rain to grow corn and soybeans in the Midwest, and so I have no complaints. You get much less rain than that, and it's hard to grow much anything but cactus, so... You know, was, I always kind of look at environments that I live in for what is their natural sustainability. Now, I'm not talking about putting up a greenhouse in Iceland, you know, and I'm not talking about irrigation canals in Arizona, you know, to grow onions. No, that's uh, the, the, those are uh, technological fixes, and they're they're fine. They'll work, but. Now, what I'm assessing when living in a place, I'm really looking at what is the natural environment. Does the environment have the uh, uh, capability to support human life without very much technological, uh, you know, input? Now, most places on Earth are going to require some. There's no way you're going to be living uh, north of the central U.S. without heating plants. There's just no way you're going to be living down in the American Southwest with some sort of a cooling system. Some sort of a cooling system. You know, there there are technological fixes that will be required no matter where you live. Uh, here in Pune, it's a roof. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to the main point of my discussion today, and that is rainfall. I looked at just about everything that you can, you know, commonly think of when it came to what's it all about living here in Hawaii, right? Uh, you know, can I survive on poi? That, that wasn't a very important point. Um, I had studied the uh, volcanism here in college, and I was fairly well educated on Hawaiian volcanism and didn't have any severe concerns about it. I learned a lot in my process. Uh, I, I had no idea that the Big Island had never actually been hit directly by a hurricane. 
seamounts too tall. The upwelling of cold water offshore here is a little bit too great for most of them, at least at present it has been. Yeah. So, you know, there was quite a bit to learn. Uh, <laughs> I remember calling up a well driller here. <laughs> And he seemed a little confused if I wasn't calling for a hotel or I wasn't investing in a golf course Why was I calling him? <laughs> because at the time it was going to cost between 1.5 and about two million dollars to put a well in which was huh? Yeah, 101 from the mainland the, 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 the dummy from the Midwest had no idea I couldn't put a pipe in the ground to get water around here. Uh, water runs down through the island way too fast, nothing to hold it. Uh, there's no seams of gravel or sand under there, there's no clay lenses. It's just all foamy lava and the water just keeps going downward till it hits the sea. Uh, so, you know, if, if you aren't anywhere near a water main so you can get into the county water systems where they have big deep wells that pull the water from the bottom of the island then you have to catch it from the sky you know it's all this so many things to learn but I think my greatest concern and that was could I really live comfortably in an area that receives between 120 and 150 inches of rain a year. You know, 35 inches <laughs> being, you know, my high rainfall, that's, uh, you know, three times that. Boy, I don't know. I was concerned. I didn't know how I would put up with it. There's no way you can really tell until you actually try it. That's one of those things you just got to try it and see how you react. Uh, it kind of depends, I guess, on who you are and what you want out of life, you know. Um, well, number one, for sure, the one thing I learned, uh, unless you're really familiar with building in uh, uh, high rainfall areas, uh, don't design your own structure. <laughs> no, let somebody familiar with the process here uh, actually, uh, you know, do the do the plans for your architecture because I'd have done it all wrong. You know, it would have been completely wrong. I had to put a roof on the building and all, but there were a lot of things that uh, uh, that uh, you know I was familiar with. My, when I lived in the Upper Midwest for quite a while, I work for a wind, uh, wood window and door manufacturer. So, you know, I, I'm totally nuts about fancy windows and doors. Uh, I love skylights. And in the Midwest, I had skylights right over my bed where I could lay there and watch the stars, you know, at night. Uh, and so, well, I would have liked to have skylights here, but most of the time in Pune, all I'd be looking up at is, is, is clouds and frogs hopping over my roof anyway. And any hole in the roof here is, is a potential leak. Yeah, as the few places here on the roof where I have actually popped holes through for one reason or another, um, the hot water collectors for my, my solar hot water uh, seal breached. Yeah, I got some black mold up in the drywall, up in the attic there from it. Uh, we had to have it repaired. And so any hole in the roof around here is a liability. Now, I, I have to have the one for my solar hot water. There's no other way to do this. So, you know, you live with it. But you best, you best either do the maintenance or call in somebody for maintenance every five years or so on that stuff. Uh, yeah. It probably wouldn't have uh, had the thought to design with large overhangs all the way around a building in this climate. Um, it's pretty important for no other reason when the sun's out you want to sit in the shade but uh, you want to try to keep the exterior walls of your building dry and it's really advantageous to uh, have a building that's structured so you can actually walk all the way around the building during rainstorms without getting wet. And that means that the roof really does need to overhang quite a distance, you know, because the rain comes underneath. Well, <laughs> I, I have moved Gracie into the bedroom with Ellen, pester her. I she didn't know what she wants this morning. It's just meow, meow. 
So, that was this rainfall issue. That, you know, I figure most of the rest of the stuff, mild weather. The volcanoes didn't scare me. I figure you can stay away from tsunami issues around here as long as you stay high enough up the mountains. Um, if you don't like tsunamis, don't go near the shore. But, and of course, since I was looking for places where I could grow crops and I wanted to do it naturally, I didn't want to have to use much technological support for that. That meant we had to be on the east side of the islands. Yeah. The west sides are just too dry. Some parts of the west side are really dry. And they're getting worse. And of course, you see the hazards. You know, Lahaina, Lahaina was beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. We have a number of places here in, uh, on the Big Island, similar, where it's dry, brushy countryside, always sunny. The always sunny places the tourists love are the places that in the future will become very dangerous for living in. Yeah, I, I know I've had others look at me and go, how in the heck can you live where it rains so much? Well, soil here drains like sand. I mean, the water really goes down fast. And if we didn't get the amount of rainfall that we get, I couldn't grow a lot of common crops here. Yeah. <laughs> With soil that drains like sand, 120 inches of rain doesn't count for very much, especially if it stops raining for a week or two. You know, most of the time we get a little bit of that rain almost every day if the trade winds are operating. But lately they've been breaking down, so we get intervals in between where I actually find myself irrigating in this climate. <laughs> I also find myself stressing for lack of rainfall at night when I'm trying to sleep when the rain stops. I have gotten so used to having that much rain around here, I begin to wonder how would I ever live without it. I'm well aware that I couldn't do the crops and raise the nursery stock uh, that I do um, in the way that I do it. Uh, which is mostly just sticking it out on the table and letting the rain fill the pot. Um, I couldn't be doing that. I'd be having to run around dragging garden hoses like I did in California. Uh, yeah, it's amazing, but it takes a considerable amount of clouds, rain, gray, not so pretty weather, I guess, in order to be able to create an environment that's actually naturally suitable for human habitation. Yeah, it's, for most of us, a good environment is not one where the sun shines eternally. Uh, you know, if you're on the Tigris and the Euphrates, or if you're on the Nile, you know, you can manage in desert climates to create a civilization back when there weren't very many people on the planet. A little bit too many people for that today. Colonizing deserts uh, is very terminal, not sustainable. Not exactly sure how we will handle all this because no one wants to stop having babies. So the number of people is going to continue to increase and that does have a uh, terminal condition. Yeah, there's, there's a point, just like the weather, where there's a point of perhaps no return or going to take a long time uh, to turn things around. Same goes with human population. Yeah, I, we're already at that point where handwriting has been on the wall for a long time. Anyway. The main point of this video is that in the coming future we may find that a lot of places where human beings desired to live because of warm weather, sunny skies, limited rainfall, that these places will perhaps become almost unlivable 
because of the dangers created by fires in that kind of a dry environment um, and because of the inability to be able to actually grow enough food on this planet in an environment like that. I think we're going to have to start looking at those cooler, moister, greener spots on the planet as being <laughs> what's habitable. And sadly, I think those spots are shrinking. They're probably moving and they are definitely shrinking. Because even Pune here, which is where I say it's, I didn't know whether I could take 120 inches of rain, we're technically in a drought. And we have been uh, in a drought on and off uh, for parts of the last decade. Periodically, we go into drought conditions. We're there right now. Now, it rained yesterday, uh, and it might rain a little here today. And so, you know, a, a drought in Pune means you're getting 100 inches instead of 150. All right. And that matters. And around here, well, we don't have a complete public water system. And so, you know, maybe half the people on this island catch their water out of the sky. Well, when the rain's reduced by 30% or 50%, ooh, you can't take a shower. It's hard to flush the toilet when you got no water coming down for it. So, yeah. Anyway. Americans may want to reconsider what it means to uh, live in the eternal sunshine, you know, of, of the Sun Belt uh, as people are relocating from the Rust Belt and heading south, which seems to have been the trend for years and years and years. Uh, climate change may send us back into the woods here, I don't know. We'll see. Just be sure wherever you move into the woods that you don't put yourself in the path of the next wildfire. Because, you know, Smokey says only you can prevent wildfires. Uh, I don't know if anybody can prevent them. It's hard to say. You still don't know what caused the high in a fire. It's, they may never know. Okay, folks. Hang loose. Aloha. Yeah, all have a good day.